Masaisa Fukase is considered one of the most radical and experimental photographers of the post-war generation in Japan. He would become world-renowned for his photographic series and subsequent publication Karasu, better known in English as Ravens, these pictures was taken from 1975 to 1985, which is widely celebrated as a photographic masterpiece. However, larger part of his oeuvre remained largely inaccessible for over two decades. In 1992, a tragic fall, had left the artist with permanent brain damage, and it was only after his death in 2012, that the archives were gradually disclosed. Since then a wealth of material has surfaced that had never been shown before. He worked almost exclusively in series, some of which came about over the course of several decades. The works combined to form a remarkable visual biography, of one of the most original photographers of his time. Masaisa Fukase, incorporated his own life, experiences of loss, love, loneliness, and depression into his work in a surprisingly playful manner. His images are personal and highly intimate, over the years, his wife Yoko, his dying father, and his beloved cat, Sasuka, regularly featured in sometimes comical, at other times somber visual narratives. Towards the end of this working life, the photographer increasingly turned the camera on himself. The vast number of performative self-portraits, precursors to today's ubiquitous selfie testifies to the singular, almost obsessive way that the artist related to his surroundings and to himself. Though Fukase has become almost synonymous with his atmospheric black and white ravens, his buoyant abstractions in color and wildly painted selfies, reveal the artist's inexhaustible resourcefulness and versatility. Work for Fukase, rarely stopped after taking a photograph, as is evidenced by the experimental ways in which the artist presented his work in print or as exhibitions during his lifetime. Masaisa Fukase was born on February 25, 1934 in Bifuka, Hokkaido. His family ran a successful photo studio in the small northern town. Despite permanently moving to Tokyo in the 1950s, to pursue his education and then career, Fukase retained strong emotional ties to his birthplace and family. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, he returned regularly to Bifuka to make large-format family portraits, a project that was eventually published in the book Kazoku, better known in English as Family in 1991. This is the rarest of Fukasea's photo books. Among Fukasea's earliest bodies of artistic work is Pigs of 1961, consisting of dark and often photographs, made over the course of repeated visits to the Shibora in Tokyo, mixed with photographs of two intertwined bodies, the photographer and his wife. Subsequently, he experimented with various journalistic and artistic styles, contributing dozens of photo essays to such magazines as, Camera Mainichi, Asahi Camera, and Asahi Journal. His first photo book, Yugi, was published in 1971, and includes numerous photographs of his first wife, Yukio Kawakami, and his second wife, Yoko Wanabe. Although the book was described at the time as a work of self-representation, it contains no discernible photographs of Fukase himself. Accordingly, it can be considered the photographer's first attempt to describe his own passionate, self-indulgent, and sometimes violent life by indirect means. Fukase's next book, Yoko, published in 1978, is a successor to the first in that it is another attempt to show his life through representations of a female. Fukasea's Karasu, best known as Ravens, was shot between 1975 and 1985, in the wake of his divorce from Yoko Wanabe, and during the early period of his marriage to the writer Rika Mikanaji. The photographs of Ravens, and other rather bleak subjects, that constitute Karasu, were taken in Hokkaido, Kanazawa, and Tokyo. The project originated as an eight-part series for the magazine, Camera Mainichi, from 1976 to 1982, and these photo essays reveal that Fukase experimented with color film, multiple exposure printing, and narrative text, as part of the development of the Karasu concept. 
Beginning in 1976, exhibitions based on this new body of work, brought Fukuse, widespread recognition in Japan, and subsequently in Europe and the United States. The book was published in 1986, by Sokusha and this original edition of Raven soon became one of the most respected, and sought after Japanese photo books, of the post-war era. Technically, the photographs of Ravens were very difficult to achieve, with Fukuse having to focus his camera on the small, moving black subjects, in almost total darkness. Setting correct exposures was equally challenging. According to Fukuse's former assistant, photographer Masato Sito, printing some of the Karasu photographs, required complicated dodge and burning. In 1976, at the outset of the project, Fukuse stated in camera Mainichi, I'm wishing that I could stop this world. This act of photography may represent my own revenge play against life, and perhaps that is what I enjoy most. By the project's end in 1982, Fukuse wrote enigmatically that he had become a raven. In 2010, a panel of five experts Jerry Badger, Yuta Skilden, Chris Killip, Jeffrey Ladd, and Yoko Sawada, convened by the British Journal of Photography selected Karasu as the best photo book of 1986 to 2009. In 1992, Fukuse suffered traumatic brain injury from a fall down the steep steps of his favorite bar, Nami, in the Golden Guy area of Shinjuku, Tokyo, and this left him incapacitated. Earlier that year, Miyako Ishiuchi had photographed Fukuse nude for her book, Chromosome XY in 1995. Some of the images from that session were published in the magazine Brutus in January 1995. Ishiuchi has said that Fukuse was almost alone among Japanese male photographers in agreeing to pose nude for her camera. In 2004, the Masaisa Fukuse Trust edited and had published two photo books, Hysteric 12 and Bukubuku, based on bodies of work Fukuse had completed before his debilitating fall. The photographs contained in Bukubuku, made in a bathtub with an underwater camera, have come to be regarded as Fukuse's last great work, a whimsical if somewhat morbid game of solitaire, that charts new territory for the photographic self-portrait. Fukuse died on June 9, 2012. In 2015, two exhibitions designed to highlight some of his lesser-known work, were coordinated by the Masaisa Fukuse archives. These were, from Window, which formed part of the Another Language, Eight Japanese Photographers Exhibition at Rencontres Darles in France, and The Incurable Egoist at Diesel Art Gallery in Tokyo. Fukuse's complete set of 30 Bukubuku prints was exhibited for the first time since 1992 at the 2016 Tate Modern Show performing for the camera.
Exploring the life and work of Masaisa Fukase, immerses us in a world where photography transcends its visual function, to become a means of emotional and spiritual expression. Throughout this journey, we have contemplated his iconic images that capture the melancholy, loneliness, and fragility of human existence. With his most renowned series, Ravens, Fukase has led us through the corridors of desolation and introspection. Each photograph is a visual poem, a meditation on the ephemeral nature of life. His images are not merely frozen snapshots in time, but rather portals to the complexity of the human soul. He invites us to question our own connection to loneliness, time, and finitude. As we contemplate his works, we are confronted with our own emotions and the inevitable transience of existence. Fukasea's mastery lies in his ability to find the sublime in the mundane, to reveal beauty in sadness. In every shadow, in every landscape, we discover layers of meaning that challenge us to look beyond the surface. His photographs urge us to appreciate the complexity of the human experience and embrace our own imperfections. Masaisa Fukase was not just a photographer, he was a visual poet who bequeathed us an artistic corpus that continues to resonate in our souls long after the lens ceased to capture his visions. As we bid farewell to this journey through his life and work, we carry with us the inspiration to look beyond apparent reality, seeking depth in each ephemeral moment of our own lives. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. This way, you'll always stay up to date with all the videos I produce here. Until the next one. See you later.